Yuji is on his way to enlightenment, which bolstered his power to reach demon god status in defeating Sukuna. Even at 10% power, Sukuna totally disrespects the physically strongest characters in the series, Maki and Yuji. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. The bad news for Yuji doesn't even stop there. I just can't do it. I can't. As Sukuna escapes so he could take a bath with Megumi. But before he leaves, Sukuna has revealed the biggest hint regarding Yuji's ancestor. And with my degree in anime, I have discovered that he is linked to the most famous and talented sorcerer ever. In chapter 214, Sukuna states, I get it, the boys from that time, <laughs> Jaku does the grossest things. That time being the golden age of sorcery, the Heian era, over 1000 years ago. Kenjaku's schemes of brokering deals with ancient sorcerers made it possible for them to reincarnate in the modern age. However, his most nefarious plan was with Yuji as he personally took part in giving birth to him. This special project gave Itadori many traits such as supernatural raw power and speed along with being the perfect cage for Sukuna. In chapter 215, Sukuna elaborates exactly who Yuji reminds him of, a person being from Harima. Just this name alone opened the doors to understanding Yuji's origins. So welcome to my classroom as I deduce what it exactly means. This is all linked to Eben Osame, the greatest sorcerer in Japan. The area around the modern Hyogo prefecture was called Harima during the Heian era. This place was known for producing a number of sorcerers until the early 1600s. Just like Yuji, Seime was naturally talented and developed rapidly under tutelage, becoming an official sorcerer at the royal court. Remember, according to Gojo, who recognized that though not possessing an innate curse technique, Yuji still developed rapidly under his guidance. However, Seimei was also pathetic in a way. Despite being blessed with natural talent for sorcery, his rise for fame did not come until he was 50 years of age. Thus, he was an extremely late bloomer, and even his prime age had passed by then. This is similar to how Yuji has the talent and skills for being a sorcerer but his attempts at getting even with Sukuna or reducing his misery has failed all this time. In face of someone like Sukuna who understands the core of cursed energy, Yuji is as pathetic as Seime, struggling with their talents against insurmountable odds. But what actually ties Yuji's lineage to being in the Ebe clan is that Seime is said to not be completely human. His father, Ebe no Yasuna, was an ordinary human. However, his mother, Kozunoha, was actually a kitsune or a fox spirit. This is a huge reference to how Yuji's father, Jin, was a human, but his mother, Kaori, was actually Kenjaku's vessel at that time, making Yuji a hybrid under his experiments. Kenjaku was famous for making cursed rooms, which was the result of the combination between human and cursed spirits. In chapter 200, and two, he even stated that Choso and his brothers were a failed experiment, whereas Yuji isn't. Rather, he is the perfect creation. And funny enough, Kitsune has the ability to trick others, as Kenjaku had tricked the entire sorcery world for hundreds of years. He even tricked Jin, Yuji's father, into having their child, despite the warnings of Itadori's granddad. The poor old man later even tried to warn Yuji in chapter 1, but was again ignored. Moreover, in a tale about Seimei, his mother desires he can become a proper human and help others. She had realized that Seimei was too strong for his own good and wanted him to redirect his powers. This wish was the reason that Ebe no Seimei began the path of a sorcerer. Sound familiar? That's because Yuji's grandfather also stated a similar wish. You're a strong kid, so help people. And this is what led Yuji to become a sorcerer as well. Which brings us back to him. 
him desperately fighting Sukuna, claiming that Sukuna should try to swallow his suffering if he is so weak and useless as he stated in chapter 214. But what truly shocked Sukuna wasn't Yuji, but Megumi, who is reducing his cursed energy output from the inside. Essentially, Megumi's body is suppressing Sukuna and interfering with every attack made on his allies, bringing his power down by almost 90%. The situation was looking perfect for Yuji to finally humble Sukuna, and that's when Maki entered the fray. Earlier, Sukuna had considered her to be a small fry, and rather than personally engaging them, he summoned a gigantic morbid new to finish them off. However, Sukuna was a silly willy and didn't have our notification bell on, which is why he was clueless about how demonic Maki has become. Niue completely failed to even scratch her, leading Sukuna to admit she cannot be killed sloppily. He even failed to notice her presence near him. Yuji declares that they need to kill Sukuna because Megumi wouldn't actually die thanks to reverse curse technique. So the main goal here is to capture him at any cost. Maki immediately springs into action going hand to hand with Sukuna. Remember guys he is an extremely skilled combatant and even with just three fingers against Megumi Sukuna had completely thrashed him. But Maki is having no troubles matching with 15 fingers Sukuna's speed even bare handed. Mm. However considering that Sukuna is operating at just 10% of cursed energy right now using basic maths you're probably thinking that means Sukuna is using 1.5 fingers since 10% of 15 is just that. However, you would be incorrect because Sukuna's power exponentially grows after each finger. This was proven by Jogo who measured at 8 to 9 fingers and believed he should technically be at 60% the power level of Sukuna's 15 fingers but close to death realizes that he didn't expect the gap to be so vast where in reality their difference was inconceivably huge. So it's more fair to say that Maki is going up against 3 to 4 fingers Sukuna. This is in line with Megumi's conclusion that Toji's speed was as much as 3 fingers Sukuna in the Shibuya arc. On top of that, Maki is not even using her sword and holding herself back because she doesn't want to hurt Megumi's soul. But all of this proves Yuji's enlightenment to demon god status is clear as he managed to keep up with Maki and even agreed to raise their speed all whilst also recovering from his injuries sustained in chapter 214. Now although his recovery seems to be reaching a special grade, Maki displayed higher regeneration as she healed everything within 3 minutes after Naoya destroyed her. But whilst Yuji still isn't as skilled in combat contrast, he has a huge weapon up in his arsenal thanks to cursed energy, the Black Flash. Especially since Yuji has already shown talent on par with Nanami's Black Flash record in no time at all. The story even narrates that no sorcerer can use it at will, not even Satoru freaking Gojo. But since Yuji is so amazing at it, it seems like he can. It's as though he's blessed by the sparks of black due to his potential. Moreover, sorcerers who use Black Flash immediately gain an immeasurable higher understanding of the essence of cursed energy, alluding to Itadori's growth becoming like a Heian era Sukuna. This would be a poetic display of power that a weak human can possess. Yuji's appearance and attitude was recognized by Sukuna and Urame to a person from their own era. To them, this person must have also desperately tried to stop Sukuna's rampage. The Itadori family all look alike but they seem to have an aura of kindness around them. This must be the reason why Sukuna finds Itadori laughable as his predecessor failed just as he did. But the key difference here will be Kenjaku's manipulation of Yuji's biological and spiritual makeup. Even though he has the genetics of the Itadori family which we believe links back to the Abe clan, Yuji's unique existence has something to do with Sukuna that he himself doesn't realize as of yet. Knowing Kenjaku 
Jinjaku, he understands the perfect being Sukuna was. So it's not far-fetched to think he created Itadori not only for Sukuna to use as his vessel, but also to create a being capable enough to hold the new curse energy that he is trying to create with Tengen's merger. Itadori's familiarity to Black Flash already heightened his affinity to curse energy, so controlling the power Kenjaku will create will come as a second nature. This could mean that Itadori will become the new Sukuna and the demon god of this era. But for now, not being able to go all out against these two, Sukuna introduces us to his new technique, Spider Fred, where he is able to use his cleave on the ground, following a web-like pattern. This is actually an amazing AoE attack considering it doesn't use a lot of curse energy. And to make matters worse, just as the odds for Itadori's first to win against Sukuna were seeming favorable, his loyal servant from the past, Orome, rushed to the scene, immediately using maximum dead calm. She not only managed to save Sukuna from completely losing control over Megami's body, but also brought him good news that the preparation for his bath were completed. This bath or ablution is the final step in the full revival of Sukuna. He says that a job half done causes problems when he notices Megami hindering him, meaning that he intends to fully suppress Megami's soul and regain his full strength. Sadly, this means that there's nothing good waiting for Megami in this ritual, which aims to cleanse the body and soul of impurities. Considering how Sukuna is currently the main soul of the body, going through the bar will end Megami's story for good. This would mean the worst case scenario for his allies, especially Gojo, his adopted father. Not even Maki's intervention could stop Sukuna from having the last laugh. And I mean literally, like Orome and Sukuna had their own mean girl moment whilst laughing the hearts out at Yuji who fails desperately in trying a last ditch effort of breaking through Orome's eyes to stop them. In fact, the only reason Sukuna decided to leave Yuji alive was so that he could face overwhelming despair. Talk about prideful willing at its finest. Come on out to me, let my man have at least one win. No. He's having the worst possible time of his life since the last couple of months and there's no way he can be broken down any more than he already is, right? Well, the biggest menace Kenjaku was tagging along with Orome, so it might be time for another parent-child reunion. Octomi is clearly bringing Jujutsu Kaisen to its end and with the last few hints about Yuji's origin, Kenjaku is most definitely going to reveal it all. This truth and Yuji's purpose will totally rattle him. But if you guys want to know Kenjaku's secret before Yuji, then continue watching peak fiction with this video on screen here.